Now, one complication for dealing with internal energy is that we have to consider both Q and W all the time. Now, um, many years ago, uh, a way was found around this for changes that were carried out at constant pressure. Why is that important? Well, if we're working in the laboratory in the basement of the Fleming, the pressure is determined by the atmospheric pressure uh, in the vicinity. And it doesn't change very much over time, just a little bit. So what I want to do is to, to inspect the effect of that and show you how enthalpy, as opposed to internal energy, takes advantage of it. So physical and chemical changes usually occur under constant pressure in an open flask or in a lake or on a beaker, in a beaker, in a sitting on a desk or something like that. Not always, but usually. So enthalpy is defined to take constant pressure into account. Here's how it does it. Let's suppose we have a piston cylinder arrangement. We have before. And this, the uh, apparatus consists of some gas, which is colored this light brown color here. At the initial stages of this experiment, uh, the pressure inside the pressure of the gas equals the atmospheric pressure. All right, now I'm going to say at this point, let's just suppose that something happens to the system that causes its gas to expand and push the piston back. Then it's just like we looked at a few minutes ago. If you push the piston back against atmospheric pressure, you've done work on it. And let's suppose additionally that we have a change in the volume of the system uh, of delta V, where delta V is V final, this amount, minus V initial, that amount. Okay? The PV work that's done at constant pressure is equal to the pressure in atmospheres times delta V in liters, or the pressure in atmosphere times the quantity V final minus V initial. As we said a few minutes ago, that's given in liter atmospheres. Uh, so the work is done on the surrounding by this expanding gas, and the magnitude of the work is P delta V in liter atmospheres, and the sign is negative because the system, the gas, is doing work on the surroundings, pushing that piston back. Everybody see that OK? OK, so if we have gases involved. This term, W, will show up in delta E. Incidentally, it might be useful for you to remember that 101 joules is equal to one liter atmosphere. I think there are a few questions in the homework that uh, ask you to calculate what the PV work was. If so, and you want it in joules, that's the um, 101 joules per liter atmosphere is the conversion factor. All right, so here is delta E is equal to Q plus W. Let's plug in minus P delta V for W. And then we have delta E is equal to Q plus the quantity minus P delta V. And of course, that's just equal to Q minus P delta V. And what I want to do is to solve this for the heat change Q at constant pressure, because we're assuming P doesn't change. This would, in thermodynamic terms, be called Q sub P, meaning it is the heat change uh, that you will get if the pressure doesn't change. So I'm going to solve this equation for it here. And Q sub P uh, will be equal to delta E. And then we'll take this term over on the left side of the equation, turn the whole thing around. This will be delta E plus P delta V. Now, um, if you look at this a minute, um, here's what I want to do that's going to simplify things for us. This P delta V term is what we want to get rid of. It's no fun to mess with P delta V. Uh, unless you take a higher chemistry course, in which case they will tell you how much fun it is uh, to mess with this. But I'm going to get rid of it for you. And here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to define enthalpy such that the change of enthalpy is equal to delta E plus P delta V, which we have just shown 
is equal to q sub p. So as long as we have constant pressure, if we measure the heat change, it's directly equal to, in magnitude and uh, is related to its sign, the change of H, which is the enthalpy. Some people call it the enthalpy, but I've always called it enthalpy. Now, um, E, P, and V are state functions, so H is a state function as, as well. And in order to give you a way to think about enthalpy, I offer the following definition. Enthalpy gives the magnitude of the heat reservoir in a system. Every system has a certain amount of heat reservoir. Okay, that can be brought out of it or can be supplemented by putting more heat in. So enthalpy is just the heat reservoir. It's as simple as that. It's actually simpler than the internal energy, but in all other ways, it's just like internal energy. So I hope that relaxes you about enthalpy. Um, again, typically, we don't focus on the magnitude of H. We focus on the change in H. We're going to look for delta H again and again and again. Now, um, in constant pressure situations, open beakers, lakes, wherever you might be that's open to the atmosphere, the reaction enthalpy change or a chemical reaction is equal to what's called the heat of the reaction. You've heard of that probably in, in your high school chemistry, the heat of the reaction. I have a reaction, I carried it out, and I measured the heat of it by calorimetry. Okay, that's delta H for the reaction. And it's nothing more than H of final minus H of initial, just like we did with delta E. And you could also say, in the case of a chemical reaction like this, it's H products minus H reactants. Well, that makes things simple, easy, easy to work with. The sign of delta H shows whether heat is absorbed, if it has a positive sign, or released if it has a negative sign. It makes sense, right? If heat is absorbed, it's going to make the heat content greater. right? So that's a plus sign. If heat is lost, then it's going to make the heat content lower, uh, and um, then that's a negative sign. Another thing that you can do that works for most folks is to think about heat as a reactant or a product. Let's suppose we think about burning natural gas. Partly natural gas is partly methane. If you burn it, of course, you can warm your home with natural gas. Heat is released in combustion of methane. And so we could, if we wanted to, write the balanced chemical equation for the combustion of methane with heat on the right side. Heat is like a product. If heat is produced, you put it on the right. If heat's required, you put it on the left, because then it becomes like a reactant. So that's kind of a good intuitive way to, to think about uh, whether a, uh, a reaction releases heat or absorbs heat. The heat released is, for this reaction is delta H of combustion, and its magnitude is H of the products minus H of the reactants and since it's heat released, that will have a negative sign. The amount of heat released is lost to the system. Remember, the system starts out as a mole of methane and two moles of oxygen, ends up as a mole of CO2 and two moles of water. It's the same system. The same atoms are all there. They've just changed partners. Uh, so if heat is released, it means uh, that the, in, the uh, enthalpy of the system is smaller on the right, and this heat release makes up the difference. Does that make sense to you? Don't make it hard. It's really not hard. I always worried when I was a student that I didn't really understand what enthalpy was. Nobody told me it was just the heat content of the system. So I've done you a favor. Right? OK, so this is an exothermic reaction, exothermic heat, heat out. And generally speaking, most chemical reactions are exothermic. There are a few of them that are endothermic, and there are a few that are 
thermal neutral. Thermal neutral means no heat lost or gained. And that's all. Most of them are exothermic. So if we do an enthalpy diagram, which is similar to the uh, internal energy diagrams we did before, here's our reactants, a mole of methane plus two moles of dioxygen, and the system is at H initial, whatever that is, whatever value that is. We carry out the reaction. Some heat is lost in the process. Delta H then uh, decreases, and uh, the enthalpy decreases. Delta H is a negative term, and this is an exothermic reaction. In general, if H initial is above H final on the enthalpy diagram, this will have to be uh, uh, an indication that heat is lost, and this is an exothermic reaction. Delta H final. Is, uh, I'm sorry, H final is less than delta uh, H initial, therefore delta H is negative. An endothermic change results in, or is described by, a system that has an increase of enthalpy. Well, what would that be? Questions? Thank you. Um, let's suppose we had an ice cube. And we put it on the bench or in a beaker or somewhere where it's exposed to the surroundings. Eventually, we know that it's going to melt to be liquid to, to liquid water. The reason for that is the surrounding temperature is higher than the temperature of the ice. And therefore, heat will flow from the higher temperature to the lower temperature spontaneously and there's nothing we can do to stop it. We might slow it down with a good insulator, but sooner or later, T uh, of system will be equal to T of surrounding. So in this process, H final is up here. The liquid water has a higher enthalpy than the solid water does, and we know that because we know heat comes in, as we just described, so delta H will be greater than zero, and this will be an endothermic process. Another example of an endothermic process, if you've ever seen somebody playing basketball or soccer or something, and uh, they get a, uh, uh, some sort of a, uh, they undergo a collision, and maybe their arm gets uh, hit by somebody else accidentally, I hope, uh, and, and there's a, uh, a bruise potential there. Uh, the trainer comes out and pops a package and puts it on there. And that, that package has two parts. One part is ammonium nitrate, solid. And the other part's water. When ammonium nitrate dissolves in water. The enthalpy goes down. Uh, and well, don't ask me why. We're not ready for that yet. Uh, the heat is the whole system gets cold, so heat comes in from the outside, and it uh, cools off the uh, damage, whatever damage was done in this collision. Uh, so that's also an endothermic change. 